Hello folks, it's finally time to talk about Yoimiya. This short analysis will be based on tests performed on her during the story quest. There was a method that lets you kidnap her and bring her to Mondstadt. But don't worry, Mihoyo has patched this to prevent future kidnappings, so all Yoimiyas are now safe. Anyways, the results from those tests don't bode too well for her, but maybe there will be some character adjustments before she releases next week. Also, don't let the meta force the way you play. Just enjoy the game at your own pace and play the style you want. Now let's start with the good. Yoimiya is beautiful. Her design is unique, it's bright and vibrant, and it really fits her energetic and positive attitude. She loves fireworks and is super dedicated to her craft. Personally, I am a big fan of the bandage look, and she sports it very nicely. She is now my favorite character design after knowing about her existence from the Inazuma trailers. I do like Belle's design too, but not as much as Yoimiya, until I found out about their voice actors. But I will leave that discussion for another day. And if Yoimiya is your waifu, then ignore the rest of the video which talks about her gameplay prowess. For those still here, I'll briefly go over why she can be good, but is currently looking to be a little on the weak side. We all know she is another pyro DPS and has a lot of competition. There's other 5 stars like Diluc, Klee, and Hu Tao. Then there's the 4 stars like Yanfei and Shangling, all of which can be very strong main DPS. Yoimiya's playstyle will be heavily focused on her normal attacks and single target damage with a medium range. This aspect alone makes her lose out against all Dimension Pyro units since they all have either better range or some AoE capabilities. Yanfei actually has better AoE with her charge attack and she can hit targets farther away. As with most Pyro DPS, they benefit the most from a Shincho support to vaporize most attacks. From testing the trial Yoimiya, the theory crafters found out that her internal cooldown is every 3 attacks, so only a third of her pyro arrows will get the bonus damage from the vaporized reaction. This can be a problem if it stays this way when she releases, especially since she's similar to Ayaka where she does a lot of small hits instead of fewer big hits. Maybe a C6 Xingqiu can alleviate this, but not many players even have that option to begin with. However, Yoimiya's burst does synergize well with characters like Xingqiu, Fisho, and Beidou since they all can proc the bonus fireworks damage while Yoimiya is still on the field. Her elemental skill duration does line up pretty well with the new Reminiscence artifact set too, so that should help with her damage. For her weapon, the new Inazuma bow, Hamayumi, is gonna be very good for free to plays. It's way better than the other two craftable options and the Windbloom Ode. Rust will most likely be her best 4 star weapon at higher refinements, but it should still come up fairly close to the Hamayumi. Personally, I will still pull for Yoimiya because I still think she has the best visual design so far. Also, my main account is lacking a 5 star pyro DPS, so Yoimiya will increase my overall strength and team options. I have an unleveled Yanfei, and I prefer to play Xiangling as a support DPS instead of being on field. Having Yoimiya might be a good chance for me to bring out Beidou since she hasn't seen much action lately. To summarize, if you have other pyro DPS that you already spent a bunch of resources leveling, then Yoimiya might not improve your account that much. If you are still lacking a main pyro DPS or just want to have a cheerful fireworks lady on your side, then she might be for you. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope this helps you decide on Yoimiya one way or another. And most importantly, Remember to have fun out there, traveler.